What I want to talk about over the next several days is how to become an abuse victor, how to become an abuse victor. Now, a lot of people are victims of abuse, and in no way are the next five days going to be to in any way minimize that. The reason I chose to do this is I am a survivor of abuse myself, and my um, I have seen how it has impacted my life. And just in doing research and talking to a lot of other um, people who do what I do, Ray Higdon talks about his uh, uh, childhood, et cetera. And I know that Tim Ferriss struggles with depression. And so a lot of people who are driven to sort of try and figure out their own life and then teach it to others are people who have struggled with that shame of abuse and the scars of abuse because it does leave scars. And as I shared, shared with you the other day, someone said that Oprah said that approximately one in four uh, people are sexually abused. And I did some looking up and yes, that does appear to at least appear on the internet and somewhere between 16 and 25% of adults are, were physically abuse. That's one in four. And that doesn't include spanking. That's what's surprising to me because my father would have never owned up to having been abusive. But if you would have filmed him spanking me and some of the other things. So I want to talk about this because I know that I'm not the only one out there. And because as I've said, my goal is to, I always say my title should be Wilbo and FSO, figure stuff out. I'm always trying to figure stuff out, and I know for a fact that I learn best when I'm teaching. So I'm reading this book called The Emotionally Abusive Relationship, and I like it because of all the books on anger and abuse and things like that that I've seen, this one does not address the abuser as a monster because it's so easy to, and, and by the way, I know this is going to touch some stuff off for all of y'all, so breathe. Okay. And I'm not saying that it, what I'm presenting is correct. Just hopefully let it in. And if you're not one of those people that you experience this, it's somebody standing next to you. It's somebody you work with. It's somebody you see on a regular basis. And so you want to learn to understand their faulty wiring so that you can work better with them. The different types of abuse basically are emotional abuse physical abuse, sexual abuse. Um, again, I'm not an expert here, so just listen to me. <laughs> Emotionally, be, I'm going to quote from the book, Emotionally Abusive Behavior ranges from verbal abuse, which includes belittling, berating, constant criticism, to more subtle tactics like intimidation, manipulation, and refusal to be pleased. Think if you've experienced those or as a child, or if, if you were a child and to have been, I'm going to read the list again because she breaks them out a bit. Okay. Humiliation and degradation, being literally humiliated and degraded by the person, the parent, the person that you hope would be the person that builds you up and never ever humiliate you. But these are the experiences of, of abused children being humiliated and degraded. Man, it just, it remembers, I remember a story. I was fat as a little boy, as you know, and um, we were at a convention. My dad put on conventions and everybody was at a cocktail party. And I remember it that I was little because I was looking up at everybody. That's how little I was. I couldn't have been more than four but my dad introduced my two brothers to a group of men standing there and their wives. And then he said, and here's our little baby elephant. And uh, 
when everybody laughed nervously, I pulled his coat and told him that I said, hey, dad, you know, that that makes me feel sad when you say that. And he leaned down like it was going to be a tender father son moment. And instead he told me off, blistered me with his words. I was humiliated and degraded and those kinds of things hurt. And really they say that verbal and emotional abuse can, can have a longer impact sometimes than physical abuse. And again, I'm just saying they say I'm not an expert. I'm sure a lot of you all know a lot more on this subject than I do. Discounting and negating the person, dominating and controlling the person. I realized the other day, because one of the things the book recommends is that you look for physical cues in your body's body. And sometimes if you'll notice one of my shoulders is up higher than the other, my dad used to grab me on my shoulder a lot. And I realized my body still holds that. So accusing and blaming trivial and unreasonable demands or expectations, emotional distancing and the silent treatment and isolation. Those are just some examples of emotional abuse. More subtle forms, withholding affection, disapproving, being dismissive, contemptuous, or condescending, sulking and pouting, projection and or ac accusations, subtle threats of abandonment, either physical or emotional. As I looked through the uh, various types of abuse in this book, like I said, the three out of the big four I got and uh, received. And over time, I've, I've realized how that has impacted my life. And so, like I say, over the next several days, we're going to talk about how to, uh, in my own subtle, non-professional way, give you some suggestions. And, and, and number one is if you recognize yourself in that pattern, and, and one of the ways is to go back and, and think about, to me, and think about your childhood. And do you mostly think about happy times or do you mostly think about you know, someone hitting you, yelling at you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you have trouble remembering, then those kinds of things will tip you off. The other thing is you have to name it for what it is. I grew up, uh, I was born in 1960, first month of the year in 1960, January. So I made it into the sixties and I grew up in South Carolina and I think it was very, very common to spank your kids back then. I know that um, I could hear my mom and her friends talking about it. And so for many, many years, I thought that my father was disciplining me and used to tell therapists about it. And by the way, uh, being an emotional abuser or being a, a, a person who is emotionally abused is often difficult for a lot of therapists to identify. Some are a little too quick to put the abuse label on or abused, and some are a little too slow. So in many ways, you've got to kind of feel it out for yourself. But I remember starting up with a new therapist one time and trying to figure out all this shame and pain and everything like that. And he asked me about my relationship with my father. And I said, oh, it's okay. I've forgiven him. And his comment was, maybe you forgave him a little too soon. And I remember the rest of that session. I remember describing how my father treated me. And I remember him saying the word abuse, abuse, abuse. And I remember me resisting it. Because there's shame involved in that, I think. There's, um, yeah, I know it is for me. There's embarrassment. When my dad was near the end of his life, I went to see him. And I took my best friend. And he's been my best friend since the 10th grade. And on the way there, I told him about what my life had really been like as a boy and as a young man and all. And he had absolutely no idea. And I remember feeling embarrassed. So one of the things we have to do is to, if it was indeed abuse, you don't have to <laughs> put it all over Facebook and you certainly don't have to do a Facebook live like I'm doing right now. 
But you have to own that that's what it was. It was more than just some criticism. It was more than um, just some negativity. If, you know, if there was, it was more than just, oh, spanking from time to time. I'm not in favor of spanking at all. I don't believe that you teach another person anything by hitting them. I don't believe you teach a dog that anything by hitting them. I believe it's a way of trying to ameliorate your own pain and frustration, and that's all it is. So however you choose to look at it, that's okay. I'm just saying that as we go through the next five days together, the first thing that I had to do, which was very hard for me, was to say that I was an abused child. And as I have read this book, I have cried. Cried because... I see myself. I had not seen all the things that I had experienced, all the negativity and the put downs and the, uh, the cruelty and the words and everything else like that. So step number one in anything is to admit it. So I'm not, again, not asking you to post it here. I don't know that we necessarily want to get into that, but you need to admit it to yourself because verbal abuse, emotional abuse. I, I know a woman whose mother used to just constantly scream at her, demean her and throw things at her and literally throw things at her, like trying to hit her with things. And to this day, she just says she's a patent, passionate Latin mom. And that's how they are. And this woman has a lot of the telltale signs of a person who has been abused. So just consider it. I'm not asking you to do. I have remembered some things over the last two weeks as I've been journaling. I get up every morning and read the book and I journal. And then I meditate. Use my little rocket book. So I'm not saying that you necessarily need to go digging for lost memories, although I did have some memories come up that I was like, wow, I had completely forgotten that. Like my mom pleading with my dad to stop spanking us. But I am saying that a lot of times we say, oh, my mom was this, oh, my dad was that, et cetera. And then we look around and we realize in some ways our lives aren't working or we're experiencing pain inside or something like that. So I'm inviting you to take a look and ask yourself if that's indeed what you experienced. So step number one is to own it, to know that that's what you experienced and to realize you're not alone. Oh my God. <laughs> As I was reading this book, I was like, that happened to me. 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 And inside I was going, oh, 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 like each one was a jab from a boxer. And then just as I was expecting the big punch, I went, wait a minute. This is so common. They wrote a book about it. <laughs> and they've written lots of books about it. So whether or not you experienced emotional, verbal, physical, sexual abuse as a child, or whether you didn't, understand that about half of us did. And that should help you, number one, if you did experience it, to feel some security in numbers, to feel that you're not alone, to feel that you're okay, and that there's a way back. And also to realize that there are people around you, if you didn't experience this kind of life, that need your understanding and love and support. I watched a video yesterday. Somebody posted this thing on Facebook of a man absolutely losing his mind in a customer service line. He was a little guy, kind of been more than five foot two. Then he was literally picking fights with people much, much bigger than him. And I thought to myself, man, that is a person who really was picked on, who has really experienced this. And by the way, it doesn't just have to be from your parents can be from a grandparent. It can be from, in our case, we had a babysitter that was there all the time. And uh, some of the messages she gave me, no, 
the dominant message she gave me. Not good. Wow, Paul is getting vaccinated. Let's go back and take a look at your comments. Anything you want to share? Tomorrow we're going to continue this. So if you know anyone who has experienced abuse, uh, be sure and click share. Click share anyway. And uh, be sure and let them know. All right? Ah, Paula's family is getting vaccinated. That's awesome. I literally just signed up yesterday. I've, I've been keeping so much to myself for the last month or two that I really don't think about it. Uh, Daylene. Hey, Daylene. Good morning. I'm grateful I get to spend time with my grandson this week. That is so cool. Good morning, all sister Rome. Jerry says, good morning. Glad to be here live this morning. Glad to have you here. Magnificent Monday. Jump starters, 31 degrees in New Berlin. Grateful for a beautiful sunrise and a great cup of coffee. Zooming with friends today. Ah, let's see here. Sometimes the word passionate gets improperly used for bad behavior. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley, click shared. Yes, Kathy, I've told the story many times about a woman who, uh, when the church went through all the upheaval in 2010 and half the people turned against me, which is, it had happened four times before and a year or two after I left. I mean, that's just what that church does. And there was a woman there who was just totally anti me, <laughs> just against me and verbal about it and public about it. And then later she contacted me asking me for uh, help. And she said she was just Irish and was passionate. And I said, well, I'm Welch. And I'm just, I didn't say anything. I just let it go. Kathy says, shared, thank you. Grateful that I was able to spend yesterday celebrating my granddaughter's first birthday. That's awesome. My agent, Steve Hanselman, is 60 years old today. Happy birthday, Steve. You are an amazing, amazing guy. Ah, all right, everybody, make it a great day. Enjoy today. We're going to be con con continuing this throughout the rest of the week. So open your hearts to the fact that you are among the walking wounded. If you're not the walking wounded, you are among the walking wounded. You are walking around people who are victims of abuse, childhood abuse, and sometimes adult abuse. Adult abuse, don't get me wrong. Being in a relationship with the wrong person, if that's your first or early relationship, can really mess you up. So over the next few days, we're going to offer whatever we can to try and help us all move forward and to heal. All right, make it a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more, no more.